Hello everybody, Mr. The Vest Man here, and I'm going to bring you an extra video, because as I was making the first three, I thought, hey, there's a lot of recipes in this game that aren't exactly apparent right away, and one of the first ones is charcoal, so what we have here is the normal furnace, and it's filled with normal coal that you mine from the ground. Charcoal is made by taking wood, not wooden planks, but wood, straight from chopping out of a tree and cooking it. Cooking it, you know, baking it, whatever, however you want to describe the action. And you'll see there is something happening. And what we get is a piece of charcoal. Now charcoal shares the exact same property as coal. And it's very interesting because you can see here, one coal will make multiple charcoal. So we'll let this third one cook here. So there you go. We got three coal, or three charcoal, sorry, from one piece of coal, and there's still, you know, there's still flame left on that one piece. And the way that works is because one piece of coal doesn't necessarily cook one ingredient. It burns for a set duration. So if you put one piece of coal in there, and do I have anything I can, no I don't. Oh yeah, I do, I have one iron ore. If I put one piece of coal in there to cook one piece of iron ore, it's not necessarily going to use up that coal. What it's going to do is activate that coal for a set duration of time. So you can see I actually made that iron ingot off of the other piece of coal. And basically what that means is one piece of coal doesn't equal one ingredient, it equals a time. And I, I'm not quite sure of the time, I believe it's like 20 seconds to 30 seconds. So what makes charcoal interesting is that you can take 50 pieces of lumber put them in here and get 50 charcoal for only the cost of two to three normal coal. And obviously you can do the math that very, very quickly you can amass a huge, huge sum of charcoal in the hundreds just by farming trees. And obviously you can make this even quicker if you grow a tree farm and then you can chop down the wood every couple of days, come in here, turn one coal into charcoal and then you can turn charcoal into more charcoal and really you're just you're compounding the effect to the point where you're making so much charcoal that you're never going to run out really really useful so keep that in mind if you're ever starting to run low on coal all right next up uh keeping in line with the charcoal coal situation is lava and you can use a bucket of lava more specifically to power your furnace so Similar to how you could put a piece of coal in, and remember earlier, I said coal lasts for a duration. So, for example, if we say coal lasts for 30 seconds, that gives you 30 seconds to cook as many ingredients as you want, and then you'll run out and you'll have to use another coal. You can take a lava bucket and put a lava bucket in your fuel. And if we just go over here, let me find something real quick. Uh, okay, here's some cobblestone. We can take some cobblestone and put it in the furnace, and boom, it'll use up that one bucket of lava. Now the interesting thing here is that that one bucket of lava will burn way longer than one piece of coal. A bucket of lava, I believe, burns for 500 seconds, so that's a lot longer than coal, really is what it comes down to. So, for instance, if you're going to make glass, and say you want to make a glass second floor like I have, that takes around, it took me around 150 glass. Well, that's going to take quite a bit of coal just to cook that much glass. You're going to use 20, maybe 30 pieces of coal. Or, if you put one bucket of lava in there, that'll cook almost all the glass. That'll cook a couple hundred pieces of sand into glass. Now... I'm sure you're thinking there must be a downside to using a bucket of lava as a fuel source, and actually there is, unfortunately. And when you, you saw it, when you put the bucket of lava in, it consumes the bucket along with the lava. So, although you're getting a fuel source that's going to last you minutes rather than seconds, you're also going to lose three iron ingots, because that's how much it takes to make a bucket. So, the cost might not be worth it if you are very short on iron, 
But if you do have a lot to that you need to cook, uh, if you have dozens and dozens of iron ore that needs to be smelted, if you want to make lots of glass or lots of stone, I highly suggest you take this route because you're going to save a lot of coal in the long run. And really, it's just so much more convenient because you can put the lava in there and basically just set it and forget it because it'll burn for a very, very long time. Whereas the coal is going to eventually run out and consume another piece of coal much, much quicker. Next up, keeping with the furnace motif here, there are two kind of hidden blocks that aren't necessarily t they tell you about. The first up is if you take cobblestone and you put it in a furnace, firstly you can see something happen and we will wait and wait and wait and wait. And what do we get? What do we get? A eh, piece of candy. We get stone. So what we got is actually a piece of original stone. So before you mine it, boop. So you can actually turn cobblestone back into normal stone. Now, aesthetically, it does look a lot cleaner. And that's really the only reason to do it is if you just want a cleaner looking stone other than cobblestone that is all cracked like that. The other piece that you can put into a furnace is sand. Now, sand is a little, a little well or a little more popular, a little well known. And if you put a piece of sand into a furnace, you will get glass, as you can already see here. But we will let this cook, just so that you can see it in action. You get one piece of glass. Glass, obviously, like, very self-explanatory. You can see it all through my house here. And uh, more importantly, on my second floor, I made it all glass here. And glass, it acts exactly how it should. It's completely see-through, so that during the day, sunlight will hit whatever is inside your room. During the nighttime, it makes it very easy for you to see off in the distance for bad guys. Uh, obviously, well, there are a couple, couple of shortcomings. Uh, one glass is really weak; it breaks within just a couple seconds, and there, I believe, like a diamond pickaxe can break it in like just one quick little tap. Also, you can't put stuff on glass. So, for instance, if I grab this torch here, you can't stick. I'm trying to stick it right now. But see, I could stick it to the ground, but I can't stick a, um, anything to glass. So you can't put torches up. You can't put ladders. That's why you see I had to make this wooden column to build a ladder. You can't stick anything to glass, which is troublesome in some cases. But it is very, very nice to look at and very handy in certain situations, uh, such as, you know, a second floor made entirely of it. Sunroofs. If you're making a, an indoor farm, you could put a sunroof in. That way, sunlight will still hit the plants. Stuff like that. Glass is very, very handy, though. So give it a try if you want. All right. And the final thing I want to go over are items. And the reason for that is the game doesn't do the best job of telling you where you might find all the items. So I've told you basically the hidden recipes now within the furnace. But some items you might not know where to get, period. So I'm going to start and just kind of go through the list with you guys and tell you what you can expect to find and where. So sandstone is made from sand, very self-explanatory. Snow is made from snowballs. And in order to mine the snowballs, you need to use a shovel and you need to find the snow section of your map. Almost every map is going to have a snow section. It's kind of random where it will be, but expect it to be at the north or the south of your map. And you will see snow on the ground, and it looks just like snow wood. You go up to it, you mine it, you can make the snow block. Clay is very difficult to find. Clay is really rare, actually, unless unless you are very lucky. Um, I've been playing, for example, my world. I've been playing in my world for dozens of hours now with multiple people. Never once found a block of clay. But clay is supposedly found near water and sand, so you want to look along beaches. And when you break it, it will give you the clay balls, which you can turn into the bricks. And the same thing is said for bricks. Bricks are made from clay, so you need one to make the other. Next up, if we go to TNT. Uh, TNT, you need sand, which very easy to find, but you also need gunpowder. And at first, you might not know where gunpowder comes from. It actually comes from creepers, but they will only drop it if you kill them yourself. They can't explode. 
If they explode, there is no gunpowder. You have to make sure you kill them yourself. Uh, if you have a steel or a diamond sword, a steel is three hit kill on normal to kill a creeper. Uh, diamond is a two hit on normal, and they will usually not drop anything. They're they're kind of cheap like that, but they can seem to drop upwards of two gunpowder if you're lucky. And TNT functions basically like a creeper. You put it down. Uh, you can either light it using redstone or punch it, and it will blow a big hole in a certain area. Uh, it works fairly well, but it is pretty costly. It takes up five gunpowder, so expect to only be able to use it once in a while. Now for cooking, cooking is pretty self-explanatory. You'll find most of these items as you explore the world. Mushrooms, for instance. Uh, cook uh, not cookies, but uh, cocoa. Cocoa beans, there it is. Cocoa beans can be found within uh, dungeons and a dungeon is just a uh, an area where there is a monster spawner uh, you will find those very very interesting but uh, cocoa beans are found down there and wheat I've shown you how to make wheat before milk and sugar well sugar is made from sugar cane which is right here sugar cane can be found throughout your world it's a kind of a thin green looking plant it grows three to four blocks high and it can it can really be found anywhere although it'll often be uh, found in either kind of lush foresty areas or kind of along sandy areas but it can actually spawn almost anywhere in the map and milk comes from cows you have to go up to the cow with a bucket and if you hit left trigger you will milk the cow and get a bucket of milk and the only other thing that you might really wonder as you're going through the list a lot of these dyes they're all fairly self-explanatory but the one thing in this decorations tab that might confuse you is the jukebox and the jukebox you can build at any time but won't do anything and the reason for this is you have to get a record Records can be found once again inside dungeons, and once again dungeons are where you will find creeper spawners, not creeper spawners necessarily, monster spawners. Uh, you will know when you found a dungeon because there will be green cobblestone in the wall. That is a very surefire way to know you have found one. So if you see green cobblestone, you'll know you're near a dungeon. And basically, inside of these, dungeons it are chests similar to these chests and inside the chest there is a small chance you will find a record so you can take the record back to the jukebox which you can make it's pretty simple to make it's a bunch of wood and one piece of diamond so you know if you haven't found much diamond you might not want to waste it but it is only one diamond and you put it in and it'll play you'll see I have the uh, C418 cat song and it's it's pretty good uh, the music is based on, on, out of the jukebox so as you travel further away it will get quieter it doesn't change the music for the whole world it's just coming out of the jukebox but uh, it is very fun it's, it's a quite the little change of pace so yeah that's about it the furnace is really the only spot of the game where there's really mystery to what you can and cannot do with it and I think I've shown you th the most important uh, items that you can make with a furnace. But don't forget to just look through the crafting list anytime you need to figure out how to make stuff. The game does a fairly good job of telling you, at least with the crafting table, what you can and cannot make. But there is one more thing I want to show you. And this is just completed today, actually, and it's my minecart system. I, I thank you all for watching, and I hope you guys enjoy Minecraft as much as everyone else is. And we will see you all next time.